Dr. Calderera Moore loves her alligators, but you know what she doesn't love so much? She does not like having to pay high prices for the live prey that the alligators tend to eat. And it's also a little bit of a pain to take care of all that live prey before she's ready to feed them to the alligators. And so she's looking for an alternative for how she will feed them. And she's come up with something. And what we need to do is help her figure out the exact mixture of a few different ingredients in order to make her ideal feed. And so here's our problem that we're trying to solve here. Uh, we have uh, two different options that she can use for some feed and make a custom feed out of using two different sort of feed stocks to make this feed. One of them is a Reptilimax, and we're given some information about its content. Um, and the other one is called uh, Gator Grub, and that's all the content of Gator Grub is just fixed. It's right down here. As far as Reptilimax, we know that it's always going to be 48% protein and 24% mineral content, but we don't know how much of it is fat, and we do not know uh, how much of it is water. That can be specified um, according to whatever the user's wishes are. So our first step that we want to do with this is actually try to diagram this problem. She's basically trying to come up with how much she needs to add of the two different types of feed, and she can also add uh, some mineral water as well in order to make up some differences if that's something that she needs to do. So we need to actually diagram this, this problem. The second step is actually to take a wet mixture of stuff and put it into a kiln. I'm going to start there and show that in the second phase of this process. And so this, maybe you would call this a kiln. And we know that she wants to create 50 pound bags. And so I'm going to say she wants a 50 pound coming out of here. But we know a little bit more than just that she wants 50 pounds. We also know the composition that she wants for that 50 pounds. And so I'm going to write that down here. She wants her ideal feed to have a fat content of 16%. Okay, uh, that's given right here. She wants to have a protein content of 46%. She wants to have a water content of 12%. And a mineral content of 26%. Okay, so that's what she wants coming out as far as her actual product. The job of the kiln is to evaporate water. And so we're going to assume that it's doing that, but we don't know how much water is evaporated uh, per 50 pound bag of this feed that comes out. And so I'm just going to say that that's a variable that I will call M sub evap. Okay, and we do know something about this. This is 100% water. All right. Now, uh, the mixture that comes into the kiln comes out of a mixing process. And I'm going to show that right here. OK. And what comes out of that mixing process goes into the kiln. We don't know how much that is, and so we need to put that variable on there. It's, I'll call it M sub mix. But we do know a little bit about the composition of that stream that goes into the kiln, but not much. The only thing that we really know is that it will have a water concentration equal 50% when it goes from the mixing stage into the kiln. And so what we need to do here is state that. I'll say over here that we have for water its content is going to be uh, 0.5 which is the same thing as saying 50 percent. All right we don't know how much fat so I'll put that up here. Fat uh, I don't know that and so I'm just going to use a variable. I'm going to call that B. I also don't know how much protein 
Okay, and so I'm just going to call that C. Okay, um, now that I have specified these three different components, and you've probably caught on by now that this whole process assumes that the food is made up of these four different types of material, and the last one being mineral. So down here, if I want to know a statement that gives me how much, how much mineral content I have, um, all I need to do is take 100% minus each of the different percentages that I have for the other pieces. And so I'll write that right here, basically 1 minus 0.5 minus B minus C, right? So we're getting closer here. Now we need to look at the three different types of material that are mixed together in the first place. Okay, The two obvious ones here, uh, we do have the two different kinds of uh, feedstock for the, the original feed. Uh, one of them, I'll just call it M sub GG for gator grub, and since it is a fixed amount of content, we just look at the uh, amounts over here and we'll just write those down. So for fat, it has 13%. For protein, it has 37%. For water, it's got 29%. And for minerals, it has 21%. Okay, and that all goes with that mass of the gator grub. What we're going to do next is uh, imagine another stream here. And this is for the Reptilimax. I'll call that M sub RM for Reptilimax. And we know some information about its content, but not as much. We know how much protein it's got, 48%. And we know its mineral content is 24%. Okay, which means that we need to establish a variable that gives us some things we don't know here. For instance, we could say that fat, we could assign a variable of lowercase a to be that percentage of fat. And then for water, we can do similar to we did in a, in a previous step and say that it has to be 100% minus uh, our other compositions. So that would be 100% minus 48% minus 24% minus A. Now, we're not quite done yet here because the other thing that we need to do is realize that we can add mineral water to this process as well. Okay, and so we'll call this M sub MW for mineral water. Uh, this has a fixed composition and it doesn't include all of the parts. It is only half a percent minerals and the rest is just plain water. Okay. So what I have done is I've taken all the information that is given here in this problem and I have translated it so that it is appropriate, uh, it's, it's appropriately stated on a, uh, a diagram like this, which is always a good idea to go ahead and get that done first. The next step that we want to do is start thinking about the most efficient way to solve this problem. And as I look at it, I look at the kiln stage and it looks like I actually know a lot more information about what's going on at the kiln stage uh, than I do really anywhere else. For one thing, I know how much mass is coming out one end and all of the composition that's coming out on that end. And so I'm going to start here with, uh, with the kiln as far as my analysis is concerned.
And you might see down here that I've got some answer choices that are available for the things that were asked. That being how much of each of the types of feed that are needed, as well as what kind of fat content does she want to specify for the uh, Reptilia Max. All right. So starting with the kiln. One of the things that I noticed very quickly here is that um, we can do a fat balance. And so that's where I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with this fat balance. Um, for the fat balance, we have uh, a certain amount coming in. That's our M mix. And then uh, for fat, I'm going to multiply by B. Okay, um, and I don't see any fat that goes in the evaporation stream that we have right here. And so this should be equal to the amount of fat that goes out with the 50 pounds. All right, and so that will just be 0 0.16 times 50 pounds. Okay, now this uh, has uh, it has two variables in it. What I'm going to do here is actually sort of restate this so that we solve it for B. B is going to be equal to 0 0.16 times 50 pounds over M mix. Okay, and this came out of the fat balance. Next what we're going to do is the uh, protein balance. Okay, for protein balance it actually works very similarly. We're going to have C times M mix and that should be equal to, since there's no protein in the evaporation stream up here, we should be able to just set this equal to the amount of protein going out. And then we should be able to solve for C. Okay, C is then going to be equal to 0.46 times 50 pounds over M mix. All right. And the next one that I want to do here is the mineral balance. Okay, so mineral balance. What we do there is we look at how many minerals are coming in. Uh, we, we have there is 1 minus 0.5 minus B minus C. That will be multiplied by M mix. This should be equal to the amount of minerals coming out the other end, which will just be uh, 0.26 times 50 pounds. Okay. Now here's where it does get just a little bit tricky. Uh, this is a system of equations. It's three equations and three unknowns. And we happen, though, to not have a linear system of equations, which means that we can't just enter these into a linear solver like you have in a, in a calculator like the Casio. We need to actually use um, a little bit more algebra to do this. But that's not so bad. All I really want to do here is I want to go ahead and substitute in the B and the C values uh, that I had here uh, that I had calculated in the previous step. So what that does is it gives me a 1 minus 0.5 minus B is just 0.16 times 50 pounds. That's divided by M mix minus same kind of idea here, 0.46 times 50 pounds 
over M mix. Okay, all of this is going to be multiplied by M mix and set equal to 0.26 times 50 pounds. Now, once we have that set up, um, it's not actually that hard to plug those uh, values into a calculator and come up with an answer. So that's what I'm going to do here. We have 1 minus 0.5 minus 0.16 times the variable that we would like to solve for. Excuse me, that's not what we have next. Times 50 divided by the variable we'd like to solve for. minus 0.46, let me do this one the same way we did that last one, 0.46 times 50 divided by that variable that we'd like to solve for. And all of this will be multiplied again by that variable and we're going to set it equal to 0.26 times 50. And when we solve that, it becomes 88. And the units on that, if we, if we look carefully at the units, it will turn out to be pounds, 88 pounds. So we can put that in down here. And we can also, if we'd like, we can go ahead and make note of that up here, M mix is 88 pounds. Okay. The other thing that we can do if we'd like is go back in and solve for some of these other things. Like B for instance. Uh, we knew up here how to solve for B once we knew M mix and so if we just put in 0.16 times 50 pounds divided by 88 pounds this allows us to solve for uh, B. And so this gives us a value of uh, 0 0.09 and you might see there that that's repeating. So 0 0.0909 for instance would be a good uh, approximation of that. Okay, and just to hold on to it, I'm going to store that. May as well store it into B since that's how I labeled it in the first place. Okay, we can do the same thing down here. 0.46 times 50 divided by 88. And this gives us 0.2614 or so. But again, I'm going to take that value and store it into C. All right. And that basically gives us all of the things that we need to know on the uh, first part of this process. Okay, I'm going to go in here and fill in some of these things. B is 0.09. 09. And C is going to be equal to 0 0.2614. All right, we're getting closer. It may not feel much like it, but we are getting closer. The next step that we want to do is move into the uh, mixing portion of this process. And so I'm going to make a little divide right here so that we can do this mixing. All right. Uh, so for the mixing process, uh, one of them that's one of the equations that's very easy to solve is the overall balance. So we're just balancing overall mass through the whole thing. And what we have there is that we will have the mass of the gator grub plus the mass of the reptilimax plus the mass of the mineral water.
And now we know something about this. We know that this has to be equal to 88 pounds out the other end. Okay. The next uh, balance that we can look at is the mineral. balance. And one of the reasons I choose the mineral balance is that we actually have a known composition of the minerals uh, here and so that's a good one to choose because there's fewer unknowns involved in that. So uh, what we'll do is we'll look at for the gator grub we have 0.21 times the mass of the gator grub uh, plus 0.24 times the mass of the Reptilimax, okay, uh, plus we do have some uh, minerals coming in from the mineral water, so we have 0.005 times the mass of the mineral water, okay, and what this all has to be equal to is the amount of mineral that we have uh, that is going into the kiln section out of the original section. And that is also something uh, that we can figure out. Uh, basically what we have there is, I'm going to put an equal here. This is going to be equal to the mineral content, which is just 1 minus 0.5 minus B minus C. And remember, I have B and C stored into B and C in the calculator, so it's no problem for me to just put them in that way. And then I have this multiplied by 88 pounds. All right. So then the next stage that we'll do here is the protein. Okay. And the reason I choose protein is very similar to the last one. I know what the composition is of protein in that Reptilimax. So I'm going to put in, um, again, for the gator grub, 37% times the mass of that gator grub, plus we have 48% in the Reptilimax. We then have, um, do we have any protein that comes in on the mineral water stream? And the answer to that is no. So we don't actually need anything special there. This is now going to be equal to the amount of protein that goes out of the, uh, in the mixture there, which is just going to be equal to C times 0.2614, or C, the C is equal to 0.2614 but C times the amount of mix, which is 88 pounds. So we have 88 okay, and again, recall that I have uh, B and C stored in the calculator. All right, so now what we're ready to do, it so happens that this system of equations is actually a linear system of equations which means it sets up very nicely for us to use our tools effectively and come up with answers quickly. So we go into uh, the equation mode you'll see there the second entry in there is the 3 by 3 so I put that in here and we need to put in the coefficients for the first equation we have 1, 1, 1 and then on the other side of the equation I have 88 Next, I have 0 0.21, 0 0.24, 0 0.005, and then finally, I have the quantity of 1 minus 0.5 minus what I have stored in B minus what I have stored in C, all of this times 88 pounds and that now has been entered. The next step is the next equation, the protein equation. So I have 0.37, I have 0.48, I 
Okay, I do not have any uh, of this protein in the mineral water stream, and so I can just put in a zero for that uh, entry right there. And lastly, I have what I have stored in C times 88. And what we see happen here is we have X. We might have to go back and remember what that is. That is the mass of gator grub. Okay, so I'll interpret that. The mass of the gator grub that we have coming out is going to be equal to 54.48 pounds. The mass of the reptilimax is going to be 5.92 pounds. And the next one is going to be the mass of the mineral water, which wasn't explicitly asked for, but if we want to know what it is, there it is. It's 27.6, we'll say. pounds. This is again the mass of the mineral water. Okay. So does that do everything for us yet? Well, let's see. We were supposed to find the mass of the gator grub. I believe we did that. 54.48. 54.48 is on the list, so we have that. Uh, the mass of the uh, reptilimax is 5.92. It looks like we have that one available on our list as well for the mass of the reptilimax. And then the last thing we wanted was the reptilimax fat content. If we go back up here, we actually haven't solved for that just yet because that was A. All right, well, how do we figure that out? Well, my proposal here is that we can go in with a fat balance equation. Now that we know these other things, that fat balance equation is not that hard to write. Okay, so we'll say fat alright, and what we'll have there is we now know the amount of mass of the reptilimax and gator grub and mineral water and everything. Okay, so basically what we'll do is we'll take the mass of the gator grub, which was 54.48 pounds, uh, multiplied by its fat content, which is 13%, plus the mass of the reptilimax, which was 5.92 pounds. That would be multiplied by A. Uh, there is no fat that comes in on the uh, mineral water side, so I don't need to add anything there. So this is going to be equal to the amount of fat content uh, that we have going out of the, uh, of the mixing process, and so that's just going to be equal to B times 88 pounds. Okay. So what we can do there is plug these things into the calculator. What I'll have is, go back into my computation mode, I'll have 54.48 times 0.13 plus 5.92 times, I have to use x if I'm going to use the solver, and that's what I'm planning on doing here, so I'll put in that x value there. We'll set this equal to, uh, I can use the B because I still have that value stored from the B that I had before in that variable, multiplied by 88. And I should be able to solve that. Yes, I'll keep that value in there for B. Solve for X and it'll end up telling us 0.155. A equals 0 0.155. Well, this is just the same thing as saying 15.5%. And
and that means that we, we can reach down here and choose 15.5%. So I hope you've enjoyed this problem. We have certainly helped out Dr. Calderera more immensely in this process. She now knows exactly how to put together this custom feed. Uh, she knows how much Gator Grub, Reptilimax, and then of course the fat content of that Reptilimax. It's gonna save a lot of headache with all that live prey that she was having to do. And uh, I just hope that uh, this has been helpful for you as well.